How's it going everyone? So in this video, I just wanna to talk to you about the top 12 tips and tricks that I've been able to learn after using the Osmo Action for a little while now. And if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Aldrin Astacio. I do a lot of drone tech tips, tutorials, and product reviews on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you guys consider subscribing and also hitting the bell to be notified when I post new videos. And for the first tip of something I've talked about in my previous videos, and that is creating a custom profile. So basically what you wanna do is be able to save a lot of the settings that you normally would use, whether it's a video or a photo setting. So for instance, if you, if you shoot 4K at 24 frames a second, uh, you shoot that a lot, you wanna be able to save all of these presets so you're able to access them quickly. So what you wanna do is just go into something like your resolution and your frames per second, make sure that's set up. Also make sure you have something like Rocksteady on if you plan on using that. Also, if you want to de-warp, make sure de-warp is on. Just turn that on right here. And once you have all these settings already in your camera, all you have to do is save that. Go to your profile in the top left. Now I can save it as my current configuration. I'm gonna save that now to C2. It lets me know I'm saving it out into C2. And I'll hit OK. And now to recall that, it's very simple. All you have to do is add that to your quick switch, which is the quick switch right there. Add that new one that you just added, which is 4K at 24. Toggle that on. Now, every time you wanna access 4K at 24, all you have to do is press this quick switch button. And now you're shooting at 4K 24. And for tip number two, is actually something I just mentioned in part of tip one, which is de-warping. Now, if you've ever used a GoPro, you know that there's a really big fisheye lens or a wide view or super view. It gives you that really distorted type of fisheye lens. And the thing is with the GoPro, if you shoot in 4K, you're not able to turn on linear mode, which actually corrects that image distortion. But in the Osmo Action, in 4K, you can even do 4K at 60. What you wanna do is swipe to the left, click on that button right there, the camera button, and then you can go de-warp and you can actually turn it on. So now it'll correct that distortion and make your lines nice and straight. You're not gonna get that fisheye look on your video. So that's a big deal that I know that this camera has that a lot of other action cameras do not do, and that is be able to de-warp in 4K. And for tip number three is something I've talked about in a lot of my drone videos in the past, and that is adding a little piece of tape as a tab for your SD card. Now, if you guys don't know, these SD card slots are very, very difficult sometimes to get out the card. So what you wanna do is put a piece of little tape on there so that when you press this down and it pops up, it now gives you the ability to at least grab it and pull it out just like that. I do this all the time with my drone uh, cards on my Mavic because even before it was very, very difficult to take it out. And as you can see here, all my SD cards pretty much have a little piece of tape tab just like that. So when I'm able to pop these into my cameras, they are easy to take in and out. And you know, especially if the ones that are very, very difficult where if you don't have any fingernails, it's hard to pop them out. So at least you're able to somewhat grab it and you can actually use the tape sometimes to push it in a little bit in order for you to eject it. So for tip number three, just add a little piece of tape on the back. Just put a piece of tape here and fold it over to the back side, and then now you're able to easily access your SD card. And for tip number four, let's talk about Rocksteady. Now Rocksteady is currently on, as you can see here in the top right, it says RS, that's letting you know that it is on. And if you wanted to disable that, what you have to do is just swipe up, and now you can see Rocksteady is on in blue. If I want to disable it, I just have to press that and it'll then turn white. Now initially I was like, why would you ever want to disable image stabilization? But really it does struggle in low light and GoPro's hyper smooth was exactly the same thing. I was having major issues in low light and it's really because the image stabilization is trying to compensate for that low light while it's also trying to stabilize the image. And when you do that, you'll end up getting a little bit of motion blur or like little jitters on the video, and it's the same thing on the GoPro and Hypersmooth, low light when you're using Hypersmooth does not work very well. The same issues also occur on Rocksteady with the Osmo Action. So in those cases where I wanna shoot in low light, if I'm indoors, you wanna be able to disable that and all you have to do is press the button right there. And the next step we'll talk about is snapshot. Now when your Osmo Action is turned off and you were to hit this record button while it's off, it's gonna perform a specific action that you set and you can actually change what action that is. All you have to do is swipe down, go into your setting icon here and there's a label called snapshot. Right now it is default set to latest setting which means whatever you shot last in, whether it be a photo or a video, it'll then automatically use those last settings and record basically whatever you had it set at. 
But if, for instance, if you have it powered off and you always wanted to shoot video or you always wanted to shoot slow motion or a photo, you can actually set that here. So right now, it is defaulted to last setting, so whatever I shot last, which happened to be video. If I want to switch that up and say, hey, I want to shoot, let's do a photo. Now I'm switching it to photo. If I X out of that. Now when I turn off my Osmo action, and while it's off and I press the record button, it should now just take a photo. So let's see if I work that correctly. Press the record. And there you go, it just took a photo. Let's take another one. There it is. Now if I wanna switch this to default my snapshot to shoot video, let's go shoot video, turn that off, turn off my Osmo action. Now ideally, if I were to hit record, it should just shoot video now. So let's press record right there. And there you go, it's now shooting video at 4K at 60 frames a second. And the next step I found that was very useful, especially if you're using the camera on the back of the screen, is the ability to turn on grids. So if you're used to like the DJI Mavic or any of the other Phantom drones, uh, you know you could turn grids on and you can actually do the same thing here. What you wanna do is swipe down, click on the settings icon, scroll up, and there's grids right here, turn that on. And once I get out of that, so I do have grid lines here now. I have two down and two across. And this helps you position things if you wanted to shoot something with a rule of thirds. You want to keep that on that specific line. You have these grid lines here to help you out correct your horizon as well as place your subject in a specific third of the frame. Now one menu system in the Osmo Action that I found really useful is when you go to preview, if you're to image preview or video preview, and you click on the icon at the very top left, which is your grid view, click on that. Now if you click on all, you have a folder set up here, which lets you know that you have 27 all video and photos, you have 12 video, 12 photos, you can actually like specific ones, so you can actually reference that for later, you have three slow-mo videos as well as zero time-lapse. So gives you a little rundown of exactly what's on this memory card on the Osmo Action at a glance, which is pretty nice to know. So if you were to go back and you just wanted to see your three slow-mo videos, all you have to do is click that and now you can go and sort it out just by those slow-mo videos. So if I click there, now I can actually scroll through and see some of these slow-mo videos that I shot. Now the one thing that's good about the Osmo Action is that it does use the USB-C for charging. And the thing is you can actually use an external power bank if you wanted to power it up. If you were to do any long time lapse or any video and you find yourself that your battery is running low, you can just use an external power pack just like that. All you'd have to do of course is just plug that in. And as you can see there, right when I plug it in, it is starting to charge. So you are able to use an external battery pack in case you want to do a long time lapse or you find yourself very low on battery and you just need that extra source. You're able to plug this in and when you do plug it in, you can actually see it's charging right there on the very top right. Now to screen switch from the back to the front of the camera, there's a couple ways to do it. The first one is to hold down the quick switch button right here. Press and hold it and then it flips it and puts the screen on the front. And another way to do it is when you press and hold this, I'll switch it back. The other way you can do it is actually by double tapping with two fingers. If you just double tap, it will now switch to the front. And in order for you to get back, you double tap again. And there you go. One cool feature of the Osmo Action is that you can actually shoot in vertical or portrait mode. All you have to do is actually turn it and the information on the screen will actually flip as well. So you can actually see now everything moved. You have the SD card information up top. You also have the battery level here as well as what resolution you're shooting at. And if you shoot upside down, so if I were to flip my entire camera upside down, it now changes orientation. Now even though my camera is upside down, it actually has all my information back reading right. But the thing is, if you wanna lock that and not have that move, for instance, if you always wanted it to be a specific way, you actually have to swipe this down. Right now it's set to auto, but if I were to switch that to up, which means it'll be in more of that default position, as you can see right here, it is a standard position with all my information readable right there. Now, even if I move this vertical or portrait, it still stays there, it still stays in that up position. And if I even go upside down, 
it still stays in that up position right there. And if I can switch that up, if I want everything opposite, I'm able to do the exact same thing. Right now it's set to up. I just switch that to down. And then now when I shoot, everything is reversed. You can see all now my information is reversed, even though I'm pointed this way, even if I go into portrait mode like so, everything is still upside down. Of course, once I go upside down, then everything looks correct. So everything looks right. Another feature is voice control. So if we turn voice control on right here on the back of the menu, turn that on, it gives you a list of commands right here. And these are the words you're gonna need to say in order for these commands to work, as you can see right here. And as you can see, the first one is start recording. And there you go, it's starting to record. I can also do commands like take photo. There you go, it takes a photo. And also how about switch screens? And now we are to the front. And for my final tip is one of the things I should have done in the very beginning and I didn't really realize what was happening is that when you go into selfie mode just like this, uh, the screen will stay on for a specific amount of time as far as staying on at full brightness. So right now by default, I think it's set to one minute. So when you're vlogging or you're shooting with this front screen or actually even in the back screen, it will then start dimming at a certain time. The thing was is when I was vlogging and I was positioning myself a bunch of times, this screen would dim out and it got kind of frustrating because the only way you could wake it up would be to touch the back of the screen. So what I wanted to do is make sure that this thing was always on. I know it's going to drain your battery, but if you are vlogging, you want to be able to have this as bright as possible at all times. That way you're just able to see and compose your shot. I will take the you know battery life in consider into consideration, of course, uh, but I think it's more of a sacrifice to be able to position and compose my shot a little bit better than it is about battery life. I will make sure I pick up a couple extra batteries in the future. Now to keep your screen on uh, all times or a specific amount of minutes, what you have to do is then swipe this down, go to your settings, go down here to screen auto sleep, as you can see right there. And by default, it's set to one minute, which means at one minute, it'll then dim. But what I do is I put at either at least 10 minutes or never. That way when you're out there vlogging and you're using that front screen, you're not gonna have it dim out on you right in the middle of your shoot. So either five, 10 minutes, maybe never if you shoot a lot, uh, make sure that that thing is switched on. Like I said, I will sacrifice the battery life. I'll make sure I pick up a couple extra batteries to compensate for that extra power that's gonna be used when that screen brightness is all the way up. And for my next tip, I recommend getting a small handle that also doubles as a tripod. Now I've been able to use a few different ones recently. Uh, the PGY Tech one that I've actually used a bunch. And this is probably one of my favorite ones only because it is very, very small and it also ha turns into like a little tripod just like that. So if I do have my action camera on in here and I were to screw this in, I have a really small and kind of compact selfie stick to use and I can easily toss this in my pocket. And I've probably used this one of the most just because of the fact it's very, very small. I throw this in my, my you know front of my pants pocket. It's easy to use. And then if I want to ever stand it up, I'm able to just throw it up just like that. And another one I've been able to use recently is one from Telesyn, which is really nice because it's a telescoping selfie stick slash tripod as well. So you can open this up here Put your action cam inside. And once I tighten that down, what's really nice about this one is that you can actually use it as a tripod. So all you have to do is twist the bottom. This opens up like so. Tighten that and lock it. Once you do that, lock that up. Now it's a little tripod. So you're able to use it as a tripod, but at the same time, if you wanted to collapse that and lock it and then turn the handle, this thing goes all the way up. So now you have a nice long kind of a selfie stick that you're able to turn this and you're able to point that towards you. So even though you have a wide field of view on the camera, if you wanted an even wider shot, you can actually put it on a stick just like this. And then of course, if you wanted to shrink this down, this one is a very similar one that you've probably seen a lot of people using from Manfrotto. But what I liked about this one too is that not only was it fairly inexpensive, all of these run about 20 bucks. However, it is a little bit bigger, right? So you have a little bit bigger of a handle compared to some of the other ones. So if you're okay with 
you know, having something a little bit bigger. That, you know, I'm not going to really toss this one in my pocket versus this one, but this one is also a little bit more versatile. Now, the one thing about this mount is that you're able to have this on a ball head, which is nice because you can position it pretty much any which way you want once it's on a ball head. So as you can see, you can move it around. And then once you find a position you want, you just have to tighten it up. And the thing with this one is you can actually use this as a little mini tripod and you can extend the legs out. So if you want a little taller tripod, you can do that as well. And another thing is if you want it flat, there's a little dial right here to change how wide your tripod goes. So if I twist it all the way to one side, to the A side, now it opens up really flat, just like that. So you have a nice wider base in case it was windy, in case you just wanted to have a little bit more stable of a shot. And there it is guys, just my first top 12 tips. There's definitely a lot more to know and learn from the Osmo Action. Which one would you say is probably one of your favorites? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my Osmo Action playlist. I'll make sure it's linked up here as well as down below in the video description. A lot more to learn from this and I'm always gonna be posting up new videos as I continue using it and of course, I'll be sharing it with you guys. And as always, if you guys got some value from my video, don't forget to hit that like button and of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Alter Nastasio with flypath.com. I'll see you the next one. Take care.